Are you wise? How can you tell? <laughs> I know every podcaster thinks they're wise. Every national leader thinks they're wise. But what is wisdom, really? Who gets to define it? Is there like a book somewhere about wisdom? Who, who gets to say, what is wisdom? Or is wisdom really just in the eyes of the beholder? You have your wisdom, I have my wisdom. Is, is that how it works? Today, we're starting a new series called Words of Wisdom from the book of Proverbs in the Bible. So, spoiler alert, that's where we're going to find some wisdom, <laughs> okay? Uh, just FYI. Uh, uh, next week, we're going to dive fully in and, and kind of start start really exploring that topic of wisdom and what is it and how do you get it and where do you find it, how do you exercise it. But today, we're going to just jump way ahead, straight to the end of the book of Proverbs, uh, for a special Mother's Day message. So if you have a Bible or you have your Bible on your device, would you turn to Proverbs chapter 31? So it's the last chapter of the book of Proverbs. And in it, we're going to see a beautiful vision of a flourishing woman, a flourishing wife, a flourishing mom. And so much so, it's such an amazing picture that, that we've kind of developed a little phrase around it, the Proverbs 31 woman. There's even an, a, a national ministry out there, the Proverbs 31 woman. Like, it's, it's sort of a, a standard. This, this woman that is described in this chapter of the Bible is perfect. <laughs> it's, it's as if Heidi Klum, Marie Kondo, <laughs> Joanna Gaines, and Martha Stewart had a baby. <laughs> it would be the Proverbs 31 woman because she is perfect and she can do it all. But the point of the description in the Bible, in Proverbs 31, it's not to pressure you, women, moms, wives, it's not to pressure you into being superwoman or something that you're not. But the point is to understand that the person you are, the things that you do to bless your family, make a huge difference, and God smiles on you and empowers that. That's a good message. So it's not a condemning message. I hope it's an encouraging message to you. No mother can be perfect, but any mother can grow in the direction of the lovely lady that is described here. So I'm going to jump in to Proverbs 31, starting at verse 10. The first few verses are great also, but this is specifically focused for today. So he starts off and says, Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. In other words, she's a treasure. Now, he's not saying that there are no virtuous women around. There are no capable uh, wives around. That's not his point. He's just saying, look around. If you see someone like that, she's precious. She is a treasure. More precious than rubies. Another translation says, uh, more valuable than diamonds. And I believe that. Verse 11. Her husband can trust her, and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. In other words, she treats her husband generously. She treats him how she would want to be treated, and she blesses him every day. Verse 13, she finds wool and flax and busily spins it. Like, those are things we don't do a lot today. Uh, where we live, our neighbors have sheep, and they just sheared them. We, we noted how, how uh, scrawny they look right now because they just got sheared. But uh, in this day, if they were going to have any fabric, if they were going to have any clothes, she would go out there, and she would get that wool, wool and spin it, probably with a little a spindle or something, and spin it into yarn and then sew it into clothing. So it's saying th this Proverbs 31 woman, she goes out there, she finds it, she, she makes that fabric. She's like a merchant's ship bringing her food from afar. Somebody say DoorDash. <laughs> um, she shops around for all the best deals. And I have to say that that is a particular gift of my wife. She is that. She does a great job at that. Verse 15, um, she gets up before dawn, just like you, honey. To prepare breakfast for her household. <laughs> no, no. 
but she's great at shopping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any who's it, she gets up before dawn to prepare. I told you, this is the perfect woman right here. Like, no one can do all this. She, she gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work for her servant girls. And my wife is saying, and where are my servant girls? <laughs> Exactly. Okay, so she goes to inspect a field and buys it. And you know where she found it? On Reddit. <laughs> With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She is energetic and strong, a hard worker. So in other words, she plans ahead. This Proverbs 31 woman, this perfect woman, she plans ahead. She seizes the day. She dresses for work. She rolls up her sleeves. She's eager to get started. Verse 18. She makes sure her dealings are profitable. Her lamp burns late into the night. Her hands are busy spinning thread, her fingers twisting fiber. Another translation says she senses the worth of her work. I just love that. That was one of my favorite phrases I saw this week as I was reading this. She senses the worth of her work. She's in no hurry to call it quits for the day. Verse 20, she extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. So she is quick to assist others in need. Verse 21, she has no fear of winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. She makes her own bedspreads. Wow, that is next level. She dresses in fine linen and purple gowns. Her favorite color, Shelly's favorite color, purple. Um, so in other words, she doesn't have to worry about the future because she's already been preparing for it. This past week, I don't know if, if, how many of you watch TED Talks, uh, but I, I get an email every so often that suggests several. And I, I saw this one by uh, a, a, uh, an ER doctor, and it was so good. She was talking about moving from crazy mode in life. Oh, it's been such a crazy, busy day, to ready mode. And she has all these steps, you know, do this, this, and this, of how to be ready for anything. And I, it just occurred to me, that is what the Proverbs 31 woman did. She, she's just, uh, there's got a lot going on here, but she's not letting it drive her crazy. She's trying to plan ahead and be prepared and be in ready mode. Verse 23, her husband is well known at the city gates where he sits with the other civic leaders. And it's interesting that that is in this long list because what does that have to do with anything? Well, I believe that the implication is because she is so strong, this, this Proverbs 31 woman, in her roles, it frees up her husband and kids to be free and succeed in their roles as well. So she's really, in a way, sort of the backbone of this family. I'm going to skip down to verse 28. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her and and this next little part is what he wrote in his Mother's Day card to her this year. He wrote, there are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. And then she gave him 25 extra points for writing that. <laughs> she appreciated that. Well, you listen to this list, and it just seems like no one can do all of that. I mean, just excel in business and family and fabric making and managing the service. It just seems like, wow, so much... And I just want to say, uh, women, you're not expected to. This is sort of like the high standard, the, the perfection. No one's expected to be perfect. No one can be perfect. But this is sort of like a description of all the best parts of, of a strong uh, woman kind of rolled into one, one description. But I can tell you this, God did give you some abilities and some gifts, some things that make you unique, just how you are. And you can take those things that God has blessed you with, and you can be a blessing to your family and to others. So maybe you're, maybe you're a, a great shopper, or maybe you're a hard worker, or maybe uh, you're, uh, you're a godly woman, that maybe you're virtuous, or maybe you're a prayer warrior, or you're an encourager of people. Um, may, maybe you're good at planning ahead. Maybe you're, you're the organized one. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're good at business. Maybe that's like a real strength of yours. Um, whatever you do, you bring you. And when you bring your uniqueness, your, the way you, that God, brought, God made you, when you bring 
all of you, you can make a difference. In fact, I want to encourage you with this, ladies. You're making a bigger difference than you know. You're making a bigger impact in your family. You may not always get told that, but I'm telling you today, you're making a difference in your family, bigger than you realize. We know this, that the little things you do make a bigger difference. They, they expand. And I'm thinking about, uh, for example, Bethany's new choices. We dedicated her children a little bit earlier in this service. And Bethany, I, I, I don't think that you can see from the same vantage point that I have. I have many years on you and lots of experience. And I know that you making a decision to follow Jesus, you making a decision to bring your kids to the Lord today, you have just set in motion some powerful, beautiful, loving things that you don't even know right now. You don't even know yet the impact but I can look ahead from years of experience and I can just tell you, your family is different because of what you did today. And I, I just believe that with all my heart. It might seem like nothing to you. I just brought my kids forward, but God saw it. And it was a step towards God. And when you take a step towards God, God honors that. God honors that. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Moms, you make more of a difference than you realize. In my family, my mom, who's here with us today, has made a huge difference in my life. She has been through many tough things uh, in her life. And yet, one of the things that uh, mom has done is you have shaped my life. And one of the ways that I can always remember that my mom has shaped my life is through powerful, empowering statements that she would make over me and, and say to me. Uh, my, my mom hadn't gone to college, but her dream was that I would go to college. And because of my mom's dream that I would go to college, I'm the first person in my family to graduate from college because of my mom. And uh, she had not been there herself, but she had, she had heard and, and read or learned uh, that if she, she had always said to me, Darren, if you just take all the math, English, and science, you can. Take, it as, take as much of those as you can, and that will help to set you up for college. And I followed that advice, advice, and it did set me up for college. I was actually able to clip classes, meaning I took a test. I didn't need to take that class in college because I already knew English 101, and I had already studied those things. My, my mom always encouraged me, focus on scholarships. Make sure that your grades are good. Make sure that you stay involved. And you're gonna, we're going to need some scholarships to get you to college. And my way through college was paid for in scholarships, uh, partly because of my mom's shaping that in me. My mom supported me as I did academics. I was a straight-A student. Uh, okay, except for one B. <laughs> I had three trimesters of PE in school. And I know I look pretty athletic. And I got A, A, B, my spring. Ah! Mm. But anyway, I, I did well in school. And my mom supported me in extracurricular activities. I led clubs. I was active in church. I did all that stuff. My mom made sure I had braces that I needed. That's why my smile is so glorious today. And my mom always told me I could do anything. And I, I, I don't know if mom would ever realize this, but all of those lessons impacted me. All those little things where you thought you were just saying something nice to your son, like they changed my life. And I'm here uh, helping to lead a church because of your influence. And so I just say, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Good job. <laughs> and my wife, Pastor Shelley is one of the most thoughtful people I've met. If you're wondering why am I taking this time, what am I doing, read Proverbs 31:31, 31, 31, and you will know what I'm doing. She is one of the most thoughtful people I've ever met. She observes everyone in our family, and she deduces what they need or want, and she anticipates their needs and wants, and has it ready for them when they come over or when they have a birthday or Christmas. I can, I can confess I don't even know what I want for my birthday. It comes up in July. I don't even know, but Shelly knows. <laughs> She'll say, what do you want? I'll say, you know, I don't know. 
I, I, I have no idea. But, but she knows, and she is always able to figure out what I do want, and I'm always so blessed. She knows what everyone in our family's expanded. We're, we're commenting how when we got married, it was two of us, and then there were four with our two sons, and, and now there are 13 people uh, that we regularly provide the birthdays for, and we have extended family beyond that. And Shelly is aware of every allergy, every preference. I remember a Taylor lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because when we first, when uh, she first married Stephen, she liked a certain kind of lettuce, and so Shelly made sure that that was there if we were having a salad. Uh, and that's just that's because Shelly is just so thoughtful. And I think Taylor's, I think your your palate has expanded uh, in the years in being our family. Yes, yes, sure. That's yes, yes. She says definitely, totally. Uh, but uh, I, I just, uh, it is uh, marvelous to me, and I just, um, I just am amazed at how thoughtful you are, Shelley. And that, that thoughtfulness extends to our church. Uh, it's, it's very hard to think of a gift, that's a hint to the, to the ushers, it's very hard to think of a gift that would be possibly used and appreciated by everyone of different ages in a, in a congregation like ours. Uh, but Shelly's come up with an extremely versatile gift today. So ushers, go ahead and come forward. And uh, let me ask this. All moms in the room, would you stand? Single moms, uh, married moms, grandmothers, stepmoms, adoptive moms, foster moms, all moms of every kind, every stripe, go ahead and stand. And we have a pashmina for you. And remember the people in the tech booth as well. Uh, just, just think, moms, of all the different ways this pashmina could be used. You could accessorize your outfit like a scarf. Let's show a picture of that, if you would. Pop up that picture. There you go. You could accessorize. You could keep your shoulders warm if it's chilly outside. You could keep your hair from blowing all over on a Washington State ferry ride. <laughs> you could do that baby swaddle thing that I cannot figure out with your pashmina. You could cover the car seats uh, so that they don't get hot in the summer. And if your teenager gets out of hand, you could snap it like a towel <laughs> just to get them back in line. Here's another fun, creative thing. And stay standing, if you would, for just a moment, moms, and I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. Uh, at the end of service, you could grab a bunch of other moms who have a blue pashmina and go do a photo op together in your matching pashminas in the, on the plaza, all right? So there's so many things you could do with this, uh, with this pashmina, and I love saying pashmina. So enjoy your pashmina. Pashminas for all moms. Would you join me? And let's just pray. And if you're near a mom, would you just extend a hand of blessing? Again, it's just a prophetic act, uh, and we're just going to pray a blessing on all our moms. Let's, let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for every mom that's with us today, Lord. And we know that moms are in so many different life stages. Lord, I pray for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit just to flow into every mom for every day. Lord, when there are, are frustrations or difficulties that come up in their family or other areas of their lives, Lord, I pray that your wisdom would be there and that you would see them through, Lord God. And Lord, I, I want to thank you for the special gift that moms are to us, to our families, to our congregation, Lord. Lord, I pray for the mom who is grieving right now. Lord, I pray for the ones who are experiencing loss or disappointment. And Lord, I pray that you would encourage them, that you would lift them up today, that you would strengthen them today. Uh, Lord, I, I, I pray, Lord, for those, uh, Lord God, who have a difficult relationship with their mom and Lord, I just pray that the Holy Spirit would be like oil flowing on the gears of a machine, that you would bring a resolution, that you would bring restoration to relationships, Lord, that our relationships with our moms uh, just around the congregation, Lord, would be strong and beautiful and positive, Lord. And Lord, I pray, Lord, also for those who have always wanted to be a mom and, and have not been able to. And Lord, I just pray your special grace, your mercy, Lord God, your encouragement on them. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would even give that person, that, that woman, the opportunity to be a mom to someone who needs a mom. 
And Lord, I just pray your blessing, Lord. Thank you so much. Lord, I pray that you would silence the voice of the enemy that would bring temptation or torment to all of our moms, Lord God. And may your words just ring out in their minds. You love them. You made them. You appreciate them. And so we bless the moms in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Woo! We're clapping for you moms. Yes. I love it. So what's the secret of the Proverbs 31 woman? Well, if you look at verse 30, almost at the end of the chapter, this is what it says. Charm is deceptive, and beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Yeah, you can clap if you want. That's good. You're clapping for God's wisdom. Yeah. A woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. In the message, uh, paraphrase, it says, a woman who lives in the fear of God. All hyphenated, fear of God, as if it were one word. And what, what does that mean? Well, uh, we, we think of fear as only a bad thing, but in the Bible, and in this case, when it says a woman who fears the Lord... It, it is talking about a fear in this case is profound respect. Somebody say respect. respect. Profound respect. That is saying, Lord, I, I respect you. You are above me. Your ways are higher. I submit my will to you. I respect you. I, I live in the fear of God. It's a healthy fear. It's a positive fear when it comes to God. And, and so I, I, I just want you to know that I believe that God has designed you. Now, I'm going to go a little bit broader than just the moms for a moment and say everybody. God has designed you, both men and women, to flourish. God blessed you to flourish. Don't believe me? I'm going to read the scripture in just a moment. When you fear God, put him first and walk in his ways. God designed you, men and women, to flourish. When you fear God, put him first and walk in his ways. That's the context for you to flourish for you to thrive in life. I'm going to take you way back to the beginning of the Bible, first chapter, Genesis 1, verse 28. God spoke a blessing over the first people. And this is what he said. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. That sort of sounds like that Proverbs 31 situation. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. God blessed you. He has blessed humankind, humanity, to thrive and to flourish and to have a leadership position on the earth. That's God's plan for you. He has blessed you to flourish, to be fruitful, multiply, reign. So why is the Proverbs 31 woman flourishing? Because she lives in the fear of God. She walks in his ways. What causes you to flourish? Living in the fear of God. Walking in his ways. Well, why don't we just do that? Don't, doesn't everybody want to flourish? Why doesn't everybody just live in the fear of God and walk in his ways? Why aren't we flourishing the way God has designed us to? Well, maybe you feel like you're not flourishing because you're physically or emotionally depleted. And if that's the case, it, it doesn't feel like you're flourishing right then. Or, or maybe you feel frustrated with, the situ with certain situations in your home or your family. Maybe you're frustrated with your finances or with your kids or uh, with your marriage or with your other relationships. Or maybe you feel like a failure because you haven't lived up to your standards or you haven't lived up to your parents' standards, much less to God's standards. Well, I think that mothers can be especially, especially prone to some of these feelings and some of these thoughts because your work never stops. So many mothers are depleted <laughs> because they never quit working. They're on call 24-7. The things you do are often repetitive, and so it's easy for your family to just sort of overlook those and maybe not, not give you the praise that, you're, that you really do deserve. And so it's, it's easy to feel forgotten, and that's why at least one day a year we have Mother's Day 
to remind us all to thank the moms in our lives. What if today, if, if, if your mom is accessible, what if today you thanked her for all that she's done in your life? What if we lived as if saying yes to this good news that God wants you to flourish as you follow him, what if we lived that way? What would happen? Well, uh, I, I want to invite you to find out. What if you just gave yourself space this coming week, even five minutes, to just sit at the feet of Jesus? Maybe, maybe you put on a worship song. Maybe you read your favorite passage in the Bible, and you just stop, and you just enjoy God for a minute. You put him first somehow. For the busy mom, it feels like you have nowhere to yourself. Maybe as soon as you get up in the morning, you just head to the bathroom and just talk to God for just a moment. Like find, find a little bit of time for yourself to do that. What if for any of you, mom or, or, or dads, men or women, uh, teenagers, kids, what, what if you surrendered that frustrating situation in your life to God? In other words, what if you quit striving to make it change yourself? And what if instead you said, God, I'm bringing this situation to you and I'm leaving it at your feet and I'm casting my cares on you because you care for me? What would happen? Would you start to thrive and flourish a little bit more? Uh, what, if, what if you just simply made a phone call or a connection after church today or, or make a phone call uh, to another person in church. Maybe you find them on Facebook. What if you just reach out to another person in church and say, hey, could we talk for a minute and would you speak life over me? Wouldn't that be cool? Because we're a church, we speak life. So if you're needing that, if you feel like you're not flourishing, what if you just got another person from church and said, listen, I just need you to say something positive over my life. Say that you believe God's for me and not against me. Say that you believe God's got a plan for my life. And we could do that for one another and help each other flourish. What if you just took one area in your life that feels like it's not as you want it to be and you just opened up God's word and searched and searched until you found some principles that apply to that? And what difference would it make if you began to step a little bit away from your own wisdom and step into God's wisdom? I believe what would happen is you would flourish more. You would thrive in your life. So I want to invite you to do that. God designed you to flourish. He designed you to thrive, to have a good, blessed life. That is his design. And, and when, when you fear God, you, you put him first, you walk in his ways, that's when you flourish. That's when you thrive. Would you stand to your feet, everybody? And I want to pray for you. So would you just bow your heads? for just a moment. You don't have to bow your heads and close your eyes to pray, but it does kind of help to, to shut out distractions. Online, would you pray with us too? I, I, I want to pray for you. Let's pray. Lord, right now, first of all, I want to pray for every mom who's struggling. For every mom who's frustrated with a certain situation or with all of life. For every mom who's discouraged or down. Lord, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, come and minister in a way that I never could. Come and minister to each mom today. Lift them up. Give them hope and encourage them. And Lord, I want to pray for everybody who's here today, Lord God. Everybody who's listening to this message. And Lord, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, for every person who feels like they're failing instead of flourishing. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that they would get a hold of your word, that they would have some time in your presence, and that you would minister to them at the deepest level. Lord, I pray you'd help us to not get sucked in by the lies of this world that say everything's going downhill, everything's going to be bad. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would instead embrace your word that says you have a good plan for our lives, plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. Lord, I pray, Lord, that your encouragement would flow into every person today, Lord God. And Lord, I pray that we would be a thriving people, that we would be a flourishing people, Lord, as we fear you and walk in your ways. 
in Jesus' name. With your head still bowed, I want to give you one more invitation to prayer. Now, I don't know where you are spiritually, but I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus, to follow him, to trust him. You know, uh, all, the, all the, the good thoughts, all the positive thinking in the world is not going to change your soul, but Jesus will. I want to encourage you and invite you to be Jesus' apprentice, to be with him, study him, read his words, apply his words, and learn to be like him, to follow Jesus. I want to invite you to walk in the fear of the Lord, healthy fear, like I've said, much respect to the Lord. And if today you want to put your faith in Jesus to become a Christian, maybe you're coming back to him, maybe you've never put your faith in Jesus, today's your day. And we've been raising our hands all day. Today, if you want to put your faith in Jesus today to become a Christian today, would you raise your hand right now? Do not hesitate. Shoot that hand up online or in the room. I cannot think of a better day to put your faith in Jesus than today. Yes. I'd love to just coach you in a prayer. If you're making that decision today, would you pray this prayer to Jesus no matter where you are? And church, let's pray this together. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We say welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the kingdom of God. And if you just now made that decision, we have an online course to help you begin to grow in your faith. I think Pastor Christian will tell us more about that. That's right. Thanks, Pastor Garen. God designed you to flourish when you fear God and walk in his ways. So good. So good. Well, on your way out, um, if you do have those Connect cards, will you drop those in the box on your way out? And then um, don't forget... We have that photo opportunity right on the plaza. Moms, grab your pashminas. You can tie them together. We can do tug of war with them, too. Maybe we should do that. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Don't do that. Um, Go take, take a photo out on the plaza. Have a great time. Enjoy this Mother's Day, and we'll see you again next week in person and online. God bless.